We're back for part two of my time in the USA. If you've not watched part one yet, go back and do that. Roll the intro. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I remember Thunder Valley, uh, it was Colorado, good track, and that was actually a night race that year. I'm not sure if it was the first of the night races that it did, but uh, yeah, so I finished third over on the podium, which was my second podium, I think just one week later after my first one. A mega race, actually one of the best races still to this day I've ever been involved in, it was so close. The whole race is mega battles to be fair, um, but obviously a highlight of mine, I'll get past Ryan Dungey for the podium on the last lap, so it's, um, it was a good day, yeah. 30 second car goes sideways. That means it's time to focus on the gate and go racing here in Colorado. They're bumping and banging bars again, but it's Tommy Searle. Now Barsha moving up past Tommy Searle. Yeah, watch here. You watch, uh, see Wharton here gets oh. taken out. That's Tommy Searle on the KTM. Looks like Searle's looking for a hole to get into the number two spot around his teammate Davalos, and he makes it happen. He certainly has shown that he can run this pace and he would be right inside of the top three in points. So Tommy Searle really showing uh, some heart here, some fitness. Look at Dungey putting the attack on Searle for the number three position. Dungey now with the outside line as Searle protects the inside. They zigzag back and forth. Height, he cuts here. Searle to the outside. Can he hold on? Dungey, that's the pass he wanted one lap ago. Again, held up by Metcalf. Very nice line oh, for Searle. He Searle may get gets the... He, he takes it back! Wow, what an incredible effort from the Englishman Tommy Searle. His first series in the U.S. Can he hold off Dungey? Justin Bush, a second. Jake Weber wins. Searle, Searle Dungey. Dungey. Metcalf and Porcel. And we're out of breath in the high altitude. Tommy, is it safe to say at this point, round number five, you've got your feet wet here in America? Yeah, now I'm enjoying it. You know, I had so much fun in that race. That's already... It's like one of the best races of my life. We had such a good race, so I'm so pumped. And, um, you know, I just want to give it up for um, Muscle Milk MDK KTM because um, it's all coming together now, and I'm just happy to be up here the second week in a row. Best track in America was Red Bud, and it was actually my my best result of the, the series as well. So I went to fifth and the second. Um, I remember I always used to struggle a little bit in the first race with arm pump. I don't know why. We've got I, some wacky shots of you doing some things to yeah, fix your arm pump. Yeah, I really struggled well in America that first year with arm pump. Uh, I actually had an operation at the end of the season. A fifth and a second for my third podium in a row, but yeah, it was a one day format. I'd always been used to two days. Before you know it, you was on track, and and then before you knew it, the day was over, and it was either, yeah, like, what, like bloody hell, what went on, podium or problems or whatever happened on a day, but it used to go so, so quickly. That was the end of my podiums actually. Um, I had three in a row and then I never got on the podium again that season. I'm not really sure why, I just sort of hit a slump and then maybe it's because I started riding so early in the year. But yeah, 9-11 for 10th, so I don't really remember nothing about that round, but I remember the track was nice, hard work. A lot harder than what it looks on TV because the change in elevation, the sand whoops, and also the change in the ground. When Chad Reeves had that massive crash that everyone would have seen, um, like coming up to that jump, it's always square, head, square hard edges. And then later on in the lap, you've got real loamy sand, so it's quite a um, quite a difficult track, actually. Make my job easier. 
it looks like the Suzuki guys do have it figured out. You did well in the 250 Moto 1. Now you're going to be top of the box at Moto number 2 and taking on the 3. Roger, the boys got to be pretty happy. Yeah, I mean, I'm just having fun. Yeah, just charge the, charge everything on that one you've got on file because that's the teams and they're meant to pay for the room. But. Yeah, Wash Ugal, um, I remember that one quite a nice. Yeah, it's a nice track. And I Wash Ugal, just past the lovely little river. Uh, six six for what overall six? Mm -hmm. One of the nicest tracks to look at, um, but actually to ride quite tricky with all the shadows, the trees. But I don't really remember our race there. I think I remember struggling more than I thought I would because. Again, a lot of people say oh, it's a little bit European-y, but actually I really struggled at this one, so 6-6, nothing really to write home about. stayed at home with Mickey Carter and just backflipped BMXs yeah. into a swimming pool. Wrapped my garden as well, didn't you, at the time? I did. There's a rut across the garden. Yeah, it was good fun though. I think I've got some clips. I, I actually split my tooth though because the bike clipped me in yes. there. You're right, bro. What happened? I basically looked after everyone out there. You did, but now the table is turned. Yeah, the table is turned now, but out there I was like, I don't know, I was sort of the grown up. You was, clue you was actually clueless then, and I sort of. Well, I wasn't that clueless, so I managed to fucking get myself a job for KTM and, and toot great outdoors, and then I actually ended up living there for a year after you went home. Yeah, no, true. My common sense just pulled me through, I think, my time in America, but. Yeah, it peaked. It plateaued. Yeah, it plateaued. <laughs> it's gone downhill since. Yeah, Bud's Creek, another nice track. I actually raced, I'd, I'd, I had raced that track before because I'd done Designation Zone, so that was the only track I'd ever rode before going there. Follow me with this camera every time I do a race meeting, I'm there kicking. But yeah, for some reason didn't have a good weekend. I think, again, I remember struggling with arm pump. Yeah, it was really, really muddy the second race, um, but I love the track. I like that area as well. Um, it just didn't go my way that day by the sounds of things. Yeah, I think if you do a start, it'll just dig down deep. If you roll out, just roll out slow and pack that down, but don't totally stop or they'll make you take it outside gate. the track I can't see. You'd come out of that right hander by me and you would stay far right and it was kind of muddy over there and you're in the mud and your line up there was smooth but you get in there and it's really soft going up there and there's a deep rut you're hitting. It might not mean anything Tom. It might not mean anything now with the rain 
but over there after the monster table you do the right that step over that uphill triple they were doing it but the line you were hitting you need to go over like five feet now shortly here from Bucks Creek route 10 So Southwick, we went out quite early that one because I was struggling that much, I think, with arm pump that we wanted to ride the day before. Um, so we went to a local practice track on the Friday, which was actually amazing, wasn't it? Remember that, in yeah. the trees. I've got um, footage of that as well. Such a cool little track, which was about 30 minutes away. The heavens opened at the race and it rained, I think, the whole weekend, but I actually really enjoyed the track. I think I actually rode well that day, but I think there's a few crashes and tip overs. Um, my results weren't that great. Steel City was the final round of that year, and I do remember Steel City. This, I've actually watched a YouTube video on it of the race since, and I actually like that track. They don't race there anymore. I think I was running third, and then I sort of tucked the front, and the bike flipped over, and in that one, what'd you say I finished? 13th. 13th, yeah. 13th and a 6th. But yeah, the 13th and the 6th, so it didn't go that well, but a really nice track, and I enjoyed racing it. Yeah, that was that season, but yeah, it all goes quite quick. And some people ask, do I regret moving so early? Uh, don't know, yes and no, I think. I enjoyed my time there. We had such a good um, experience. It was literally living my dream. But then I think if I'd have gone a few more, a few more years later, I may have won the World Championship the following year. Uh, so Supercross, at the end of the 2009 motocross season, basically had a couple of weeks off and then we went straight into Supercross, which is what everyone does really. I actually really enjoyed it. That year was a little bit tricky with KTM and how they run their program. Um, they sort of wanted to close everything in America. Everything crashed in the economy. It was the end of 2009, so I had a two year deal. And at one point they tried to get me out of that contract. Um, I think one day was even at Supercross track and we got a text, didn't we, remember? Mm. Saying that you're gonna race a 125 and um, we're gonna cut your contract, etc. Which was a bit strange. I don't think they really wanted to run that team. So in the end, it was just me on it. They still had their Supercross track, the same one they're at now still, um, but it was just me riding it that year. I had Casey Light on the team with me. He was sort of team manager. And then we had my mechanic, um, Jay, that year. So it was a small team, but I quite enjoyed it. I had quite a good off season, really, coming to the first round at Anaheim 1. I only done two, so I do remember my results. It was seventh at Anaheim 1, eighth, uh, Phoenix, I hurt my ankle in qualifying um, by case in the jump. A lot of people ask the question about Supercross and how was it going, the transition from Macross. Um, I took to it quite well actually. I used to have a little Supercross track at home. Um, nothing like what you'd race, but when I was on like a 125 riding in my garden. If you look at the results from that year, I was sort of well in the mix with it all. My times were good, my speed was good. So we had Anaheim 1 where I got 7th. Um, quite a good race actually. Uh, just I held my own. I wasn't blazing fast, but I was in the mix um, all day long. And then in Phoenix, 
Uh, I remember the whoops were massive at Phoenix and I struggled in those. Um, sort of, I struggled in Phoenix a lot more than I did at Anaheim. I think maybe the track was a little bit tougher. And then Anaheim three, uh, sorry, Anaheim two, which was um, my third round actually, felt really good. I was on the board in practice, which on the board is like the first five positions. I remember looking up in, um, in practice one and seeing myself on that at the end of the session. So I was well happy. Practice two, I just, there was a section I think you tripled into a corner into a right-hander and anyway, I, I jumped the triple and I went into the right-hander, just tucked the front, landed really awkwardly on my shoulder, sort of just went down like that. Um, and I damaged all the nerves in my shoulder and that, uh, that put pay to sort of my supercross, um, my supercross season and that was it really. With KTM we decided to put all my efforts into outdoors um, because the supercross season was sort of over. And I went into the first round of that outdoor year in 2010 and I got second in my first race. I actually nearly won it and poor Sale passed me um, with three corners to go. So the second race, I, my gear shifter um, bent and snapped off uh, early in the race and then I actually made a mistake on my own after trying to override the bike. I think I was stuck in third gear or something and I fell back on that same shoulder um, and then couldn't lift it again. So that was the end of my outdoor season and my AMA career really. Darren, look to his right, it's Tommy Searle on the new KTM up there also and then around the outside establishing second place is Christophe Purcell. Crazy action behind him. There's Dean Wilson, one of the rookies, goes down early on. Five laps, Tommy Searle and Eli Tomac gave each other everything they had until finally Tomac slammed the door. The win, this was a battle for second between Searle and Porcel behind the rookie, but then the rookie mistake. Tomac throws it away. Drag race to the finish between Tommy Searle and Christophe Porcel in this move that Porcel puts on the outside wow. of Searle, comes over, blocks his line, this is on the last lap. That's why they call the 377 the crafty Frenchman. It looked like they had him. They almost did. Porcel wins moto number one. Awesome ride for Tommy Searle to finish second. And Tomac, after the crash, pick himself up for a podium finish in his very first pro race.